Hey guys, welcome to the next coding assignment, the prime number coding assignment. Now, in this assignment, what we're going to be doing is writing a program that determines if a number is prime or not. So you may be asking yourself, what is a prime number? Well, a prime number is a number that is only divisible by one and itself. And let me give you an example. All right, so let's just say we have the number five. If you look at the list that I have here, we see that five is only divisible by one and itself. So five divided by one equals five, and five divided by five equals one. So if you look at the numbers between these two, you'll realize that no other divisors will give you a quotient which has no remainder. So this ultimately this ultimately means that five is a prime number. And just to confirm again, five is prime because it is only divisible by one and itself. All right, so let me show you the flip side of this now. We have the number 10. So we have the number 10, which is divisible by 1, which you can see here, 10 divided by 1 equals 10, and it's divisible by itself. 10 divided by 10 equals 1. But if you look through this list, you'll see that the divisors 2 and the divisor 5 will give you a quotient that does not have a remainder. So this ultimately means that the number 10 is not a prime number. And the reason that it is not a prime number is because the number 10 is not only divisible by one and itself. Next, let's jump right into the breakdown of this coding assignment. So when we're writing this program, there's a couple things that we need to take into account. We first of all need to create ourselves a method that takes in a number. So this method is going to consist of a parameter. The parameter is going to contain the number that we're going to be testing. We're going to te test if that number is prime or not. We are also going to need this method to return a Boolean value. It's going to return true if it is a prime number, and it's going to return false if it is not a prime number. We are also going to need ourselves a loop. Now this loop is going to iterate from the start number to the number that was entered into that parameter. And what we're going to be doing is actually checking the different divisors against the number entered to ultimately determine if this number is prime or not. And basically the way we're going to do that is determine if the number has a remainder or not. And then lastly, what we're going to be doing is returning true or false based on the past in number. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys, but if it doesn't, I'll explain it a little bit more in the code. So let's jump right into that code. All right, guys, so welcome to the coding portion of this video. And in this portion of the video, we're going to write a program to determine if a number is prime or not. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I'm going to do is zoom this in for you guys. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is put ourselves together a method. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a method that returns a Boolean value, and this method is also going to take in a prime number. So we just want to go public static boolean is prime and int number. This is a parameter that's going to hold that number that we need to test to determine if it's prime or not. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is write code that we're going to use to determine if the number is prime or not. So I'm going to first start off with a loop for int i equals 2. i is lesser than or equal to number divided by 2. And then i++. And I'm going to explain this 
in a minute. Okay, so we have our loop here. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do we start off at 2, and why are we ending at number divided by 2? So, in order to answer this, let's just review a prime number again. A prime number is a number that is only divisible by 1 and itself. So, due to the fact that we already know this, there's no need to start at 1, because we already know what what the answer is. It's, the, it's a number that is divisible by 1 and itself. We already know that. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually start at 2. And we're going to work our way up through each number between 2 and the actual number that's passed in. But as you can see, we're dividing this number by 2. And the reason for that is because no number is divisible by more than half of itself. So to explain this a little bit more, let's just say the number passed in is 10. All right, so we divide 10 by 2, we get 5. Okay, so we obviously know that 5 times 1, that's 5. 5 times 2, that's going to give us 10. And then if we go to 5 times 3, that's going to give us 15. And if we keep going up, we're never going to hit the number 10 because the product is going to continuously go up. So what we need to do is add this number divided by 2 to make sure that we don't go above half of that number because there really isn't a reason to keep going up half that number and we're just going to waste iterations of this loop, which we already know are not going to equal out to the number that's passed in. And yeah, so that's pretty much why we have the loop implemented this way. And I'm also just going to add a comment here. This loop will start at 2 and end at half the number passed in. The reason for number divided by 2 is because no number is divisible by more than its half. All right, so hopefully this makes sense to you guys. What I want to do next is create a conditional statement. Now, this conditional statement that I'm about to put together is going to check to see if the numbers between 2 and the number passed in divided by 2 has a remainder or not. So I just want to go if the number passed in number divided by and this is the modulus symbol. Hopefully you guys know about this symbol. And basic so basically this modulus symbol is a symbol that's going to determine if there is a remainder after you divide two numbers. Pretty straightforward. And what I'm going to do is just return false. Okay? So let's explain this a bit. Also, let me just write a comment really quickly. If the number divided by 1 has no remainder, then it is not a prime number. So basically what I'm saying here is if we have the number that's passed in and we divide it by the current iteration that we are in the loop, which is also going to be the number in between 2 and the number that we passed in, and the remainder is 0, then that means that this number is going to have then, yeah, so basically this means that when we divide these two numbers and if they have no remainder, then that means that the number is not prime. So I'm also going to write this out. Number, so that we'll be able to see the actual value, is not a prime number. All right, 
So we have our conditional statement here that is basically going to take the prime number divided by a number within that loop and we're going to determine if it has a remainder or not. So if it doesn't have a remainder, then it is a prime number, pretty much. And what we also need to do is check for if the number is prime. So this out dot print ln number plus is a prime number. All right. So basically, the number is a prime number if the remainder is not equal to zero. So to just go over this method one more time, let's start from the top. We have a method that is called is prime. This method is going to take in the number so that we can test whether or not it's prime or not. And we're also going to return a Boolean value. So the first thing that we've done is we've created a loop that is going to iterate through the range of numbers between 2 and the prime number divided by 2. We are then going to check each of the numbers between this range that we have here. And we're going to determine if the number divided by the current iteration is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, then we're going to print out this is not a prime number. Because as I said, a prime number is a number that's only divisible by 1 and itself. And this is why we're printing this out and this is why we are returning false. But let's just say if the number divided by i is not equal to zero, then this will be printed out. The number is a prime number. So the last thing that we need to do is actually go up here and then execute this method. And let's just pass in the number five. All right. So basically, the number five is prime. So if we run this, it is a prime number because five is only divisible by one in itself. Now, let's test out another case. We go up here, we pass in the number 100. All right, so if we pass in 100, what we're gonna get is it's not a prime number because 100 is not only divisible by one in itself. It's divisible by multiple other numbers. All right, so if we go up here and then we run, 100 is not a prime number. So this is a pretty simple coding exercise. So if you ever get it during an interview, just make sure you watch this, you, you watch this video so that you can kind of prepare for these interviews. But um, this is pretty much it. It's fairly simple. And if you have any questions, like I always say, leave them in the comments below. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you've learned something from here. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And see you in the next one.